Hello students, how are you all? Welcome to Affairs Cloud, Learn to Lead. My name is Vikas Rana. So students, we have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through the Play Store for Android phones. Once you have downloaded and logged in with your Gmail ID, you will be transferred to your home page where you can see all the courses that are offered by us. Once you have purchased the course, you can see your courses in the My Course section. But why our courses are so better? Why we think we provide you one of the best content? Because we provide you content on daily basis. In the daily basis, we provide you current affairs with 20 questions quiz as well as the PDF of the current affairs of daily. Then similarly for weekly, on weekly basis, we provide you current affairs PDF as well as a 50 questions quiz that will help you to revise all the content that you have learned. Then on monthly basis also, we provide you top 100 current affair questions PDF that will be the compiled PDF of the 100 questions of that particular month that will be very helpful for you. And not just this friends, we provide you in English as well as in Hindi too. So both English and Hindi students can enjoy our courses. Apart from this friends, we also provide you banking related question answers, the banking related MCQ questions, the quizzes that will help you prepare for the bank exams. Not just that friends, we provide you a new way of learning that is your infotainment infographics that is a different and interesting way of learning. Apart from this, we cover 20 topic wise current affairs. These topics are important such as apps portals, important days, books and authors days, uh, national affairs, international affairs, sports, defense, all these topics, these are highly important and questions from these particular topics are asked. Also, we cover state-wise current affairs also that will help you to prepare for your state exams. Also friends, as I told you, if you use the code VIKAS10, you will be given extra 10% discount on the purchase you make. If you have any problem regarding login and your application, then you can contact us on support at the rate of affairscloud.com this is our email id and you can contact us on our mobile phone that is 9677333386 hello everyone how are you all i hope you are all good so students in this video we will be discussing important current affairs of 25th of november the session will be very interesting so do pay attention till the end so friends we'll, st we'll start with some revision current affairs of yesterday's all right first is a free trade agreement fta was signed between india and australia what this free trade agreement will do is this will encourage the trade between two nations and all the tariff that used to be applied on various products that were traded between india and australia has now been eliminated all right also a similar kind of free trade agreement is going to be signed between india and uk also it is on uh, hold right now but soon we can anytime hear about this new trade free trade agreement between india and uk also next Arita Patti, this is the Arita Patti Biodiversity Heritage Site, BHS. This is the first of its kind in Tamil Nadu, Arita Patti Biodiversity Heritage Site. Important. Mark this. You should know the name. And where is it located? It is in Tamil Nadu. Next is Federal Bank. They have launched a deposit scheme and this deposit scheme is basically for NRIs. And the name of this deposit scheme is Deposit plus why this is important and what is the main focus here is that 7.5 percent interest will be provided for a period of 700 days if there is a fixed deposit of 700 days also the fixed deposit that will be generated cannot be broken in between all right you cannot close that fixed deposit before the desired time period also then if you are taking a fixed deposit of say 1 lakh rupees then you can avail a loan on this fixed deposit that will be around of 75 percent of this amount that means you can get a loan of 75 thousand rupees if you are having a deposit of 1 lakh rupees next hdfc bank has partnered with flyware to make digital payments of the international education fees easier that means if any indian student is going for a higher studies in different nations then this flywire will help them to pay for their pay, uh, education fees digitally for example indians can pay the flywire in rupees and this flywire will be transferring that amount into that particular institute or university in the native currency of that particular area so it was hdfc bank has partnered with flywire for this digital payments of international education 
नेक्स्ट एन आई आई टी चेयरमैन एंड फाउंडर राजेंद्र सिंह पवर हैज बिन ऑनर्ड विद द लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट अवार्ड बाय फिकी इंपॉर्टेंट टेक अ नोट आई रिपीट एन आई आई टी चेयरमैन एंड फाउंडर राजेंद्र सिंह पवर हैज बिन ऑनर्ड विद दिस लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट अवार्ड बाय फिकी इंपॉर्टेंट नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट रिमेंबर अ न्यू टूरिज्म पॉलिसी वॉज लॉन्च बाय विच स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इट वॉज लॉन्च बाय असम स्टेट गवर्नमेंट देन नेक्स्ट इज योर हिंदुस्तान जिंक लिमिटेड रिमेंबर हिंदुस्तान जिंक लिमिटेड इज इन द टॉप थ्री कंट्रीज दैट आर सस्टेनेबल इन टर्म्स ऑफ मेटल माइनिंग सेक्टर आई रिपीट इफ द क्वेश्चन आज टू यू इन सच अ वे दैट इन द मेटल माइनिंग सेक्टर विच इज द टॉप थ्री कंट्रीज और विच इज द इंडियन टॉप थ्री कंट्रीज हेयर इट विल बी हिंदुस्तान जिंक लिमिटेड इट विल बी इन द टॉप थ्री सस्टेनेबल कंपनीज नेक्स्ट इफ आस्ट विच इज द फर्स्ट कंपनी और द रैंक वन कंपनी इन एशिया पैसेफिक रीजन in the asia pacific region in terms of metal mining sector that will also be your hindustan zinc limited next isro isro recently conducted the 200th launch of rs200 sounding rocket and what is this rs200 that is your rohini as you can see it in the picture it was your rs200 sounding rocket that recently conducted its 200th launch all right and don't confuse what does rs stands for rohini next gulam abbas ji as you can see him in the picture he was the arjun awardee and former captain of indian men's basketball team that has recently passed away important take a note this also question can be asked regarding his obituary so these were all your revision current affairs friends now to all those students who are continuing to watch this video i'll suggest to take out a pen and paper and start taking notes the first current affair for the day is that cse and center has recently joined to develop electric vehicle batteries that are suited for india what is csc cet is csc is your center for science and environment basically these two organization came together to develop electric vehicle batteries ev batteries that will be suited for india why just suited for india because you can see in india we can see high temperature because of this high temperature if you are following the news then you must have known that ola electric vehicle all the electric scooters were launched and those multiple electric scooters caught fire the reason was high temperature because of the high temperature the battery tends to explode sometime and those batteries should be suited for a particular area so similarly for that purpose only so that electric vehicles can be safe those batteries can be safe so that end consumer can have a confidence in buying a particular electric vehicle this csc and center came together to jointly develop an electric vehicle batteries that will be specifically suited for india or we can say that will be specifically meeting the india's requirement also remember a white paper will be prepared on a road map to develop the new electric vehicle battery technology in india and this will be followed by the creation of an expert industry forum or platform to support this process highly important all right mark this similarly if we talk about delhi if you remember a similar port type of thing that was my ev launch this was to encourage the sales of three wheeler electric vehicle in new delhi so that people can adopt more three wheelers all right mark this then apart from this there was a scheme that was launched by government in of india in 2015 what was that scheme that was known by the name fame what is fame faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles in india remember this fame question can be asked when was fame launched it was in 2015 and what is fame faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles in india this was a scheme that was launched to promote the manufacturing of electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles in india all right and this fame was launched in the year 2015 by the government of india all right coming back if we talk about the csc center for science and environment who will be director general here sunita narayan and who will be the chairperson here raj ms liberan next fpc to set up india's first private agriculture mandi at nasik first of all what is a agriculture mandi basically here you will be able to sell and buy produce that means farmers can go and sell their produce here and similarly uh, wholesale or you can say it will be a kind of a wholesale market all right so for that only remember shahadri farmer producer company that is fpc has bagged a license the first in india to set up a 
प्राइवेट एग्रीकल्चर मंडी मार्केट विद वर्ल्ड क्लास इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन द नेक्स्ट थ्री मंथ एट द फाइनेंशियल आउटले ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव करोड़ रुपीज वेयर दिस विल बी इन नासिक महाराष्ट्र हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल राइट एंड वॉट दीज मंडीज आर बेसिकली दीज मंडीज आर बेसिकली वेयर दिस पीपल दीज फार्मर्स कैन गो एंड सेल देयर प्रोड्यूस इजिली Apart from this, under this particular initiative, that is the first of its kind in India, all the processes of the field trades undertaken by the farmers for horticulture produce will be documented, and also the farmers can store their produce in the private market. All right. Also remember, this will be a digital market and a physical market that would support the traders and farmers to ensure transparency in the trade communities, and this will also allow for a better price realization. All right, so it will be your Shadri Farmer Producer Company that has begged the license for the first of its India's private agriculture market Monday. Next, next remember we will be talking about seven Indian universities on the global employment employability university ranking. That means in terms of employability, all right, global employability, there were seven Indian universities that were in the these rankings. All right, and IIT Delhi were among the. top here if we talk about iit delhi here you can see in the year 2022 the rank of iit delhi here in this global employability university ranking was 28 that was one above from 2021 that was 27 but still a overall if we talk about all the indian universities iit delhi has secured the top position and here are these seven universities that you should remember iit delhi iisc bangalore iit bombay iim ahmedabad iit khadakpur mit university and bangalore university these are the few universities that has secured the top ranking all right also remember if we talk about this only remember this will be the times higher educations 12th edition of the annual global employability university ranking all right this is your global employability university ranking that is the 12th edition of this that was released by times higher education all right highly important and these indian university that are seven indian university these are among the top 250 universities all around the world where is the headquarter of times higher education it is in london united kingdom next Next is global intellectual property. What is first of all? Tell me what is this IP intellectual property? When you have a sole right for a particular service, product, or any company or anything. Say for example, you develop a kind of a product, all right, and you had an intellectual property right for that, or you have a sole right for that particular. You have a license for that, all right. And if any other person tries to copy that particular product, then you can go for a formal. a uh, law or you can file a case against that person because he will be using your technology or your product that you have developed all right that is your intellectual property so remember recently wipo's global intellectual property filings reached record levels in 2021 so what is wipo world intellectual property organization that is your wipo they have released a report that was world intellectual property indicators 2021 according to them the global innovators submitted 3.4 million patent applications in 2021 that is an increase of 3.6% from 2020 nearly 67.6 percent of all the applications worldwide were received by the offices in asia all right highly important next next is indian indonesian troops to engage in a joint training exercise that is garuda shakti and this exercise between indian and indonesian troops will be held where it will be held in karawang what is where is this karawang karawang is in indonesia only and we know indonesia was having the g20 summit presidency recently and it handed over the g20 presidency to now india india will be having this g20 presidency from 1st of december 2022 to 30 30th of november 2023 also vasudev kutumbakam was the theme that was launched by prime minister narendra modi for this g20 and the 18th edition of this g20 summit will be hosted by india only in new delhi in this month of september 2020 Three. So coming back, Garuda Shakti. Garuda Shakti is an exercise that is a bilateral joint training exercise that is conducted between India and Indonesian troops, and this will be the eighth edition of the exercise that will be hosted where the location will be 
Karawang in Indonesia. Highly important, friends. I repeat, this will be the eighth edition of this exercise. This will be held between India and Indonesia, and this will be the location will here will be Indonesia where this exercise will be hosted. That is Garuda Shakti. All right. Also, Garuda Shakti. This is a part of military to military exchange programs. It seeks to improve understanding, cooperation, and interoperability between the special forces of the two. armies also remember the first edition of this exercise garuda shakti was held in the year 2012 in india and this will be the eighth edition that we are now talking about all right so that's all or you should know about garuda shakti next report who world health organization recently reported that nearly 40 million children are susceptible to measles Threat. A report was released on a measles that stated around forty million children will be susceptible to measles. All right, highly important. Here you can see, according to this data that was released by WHO and United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention, nearly forty million children have missed a measles vaccine dose in twenty twenty one due to COVID nineteen pandemic, and due to which around twenty five million children have missed their first dose of fourteen point uh, first dose, and around fourteen point seven million children have missed their second dose, and due to which now they are also susceptible to measles threat. Just direct information you should know. Next, next is Ayush Minister has inaugurated North East first R R I U M in Silchar Assam. What is this R R I U M? This is your Regional Research Institute of Unani Medicines. So, Sir Bandana. So, Sir Bandana Sonowal ji, who is our Union Minister of Ayurveda, Yoga, Nerupachi. and unani siddha homeopathy this is the full form of ayush i repeat ayurveda yoga and neuropathy unani siddha and homeopathy this is the full form of ayush that and the union minister of ayush sonowal ji has inaugurated this r i this r r i u m that is your regional research institute of unani medicines this will be the first of its kind institute for unani medicine in north east silchar in assam The state of this art institute will play a vital role in the promotion of Unani medicine, a traditional medicine practice in the Ayush system. This R R I U M will spread over an area of three point five acres, and it was built at an investment of forty eight crore rupees. All right. Also remember, the center is equipped to screen patients for non communicable disease like cardiac, pulmonary stroke, cancer, and diabetes. Also. All right. At this particular, your, uh, at this particular institute, that is your regional research institute of Unani medicine. Where this will be built? This will be built in Silchar, Assam. Who inaugurated it? It was inaugurated by Sonowal ji, who is our Ayush minister. What is the full form of Ayush? We just saw. Ayush is your Ayurveda, Yoga, and Neuropathy, Unani, Siddha, and Homeopathy. Next. Next, we will be talking about the country's first sticker-based debit card. I repeat, the first sticker-based debit card was launched by National Payment Corporation of India along with IDFC First Bank. Highly important. Here you can see first step. This is the first step. That is country's first sticker-based debit card that was launched by NPCI. That is your National Payment Corporation of India along with IDFC First Bank. All right. This is India's first sticker-based debit card that will be used to facilitate transactions by tapping the sticker on the near field communication that you will be using NFC. All right. That will enable your point to pay, uh, point of sale terminal. Highly important. Coming back, who launched this first step? It was jointly launched by NPCI along with IDFC First Bank. If we talk about IDFC First Bank, where is the headquarter? It is in Mumbai. Maharashtra and who is the CEO? V. Vedyanathan ji is the current MD and CEO of this bank. And this bank was established in the year December month of two thousand eighteen. All right. Next. Next is if we talk about the feature, this cap uh, particular debit card has a complimentary personal accidental cover, round the clock concierge services, and variety of rupee offers. This card can be used to. tap and pay in restaurants stores and such other places the tap and pay option in the card is applicable for transactions up to 5000 rupees whereas above 5000 you require a tap and pin to proceed on these 
payments then here you can see we are talking about idfc bank it has collaborated with npci that is your national payment corporation of india to launch first app that is india's first sticker based debit card that will be using nfc for point of sale or you can say for payment all right next next is canara bank Canara Bank has recently launched electronic bank guarantee with NESL. What is this NESL? This is your National E-Governance Service Limited. So Canara Bank in partnership with NESL has recently launched an electronic bank guarantee on their 117th foundation day that was celebrated on 19th of November. So this is the information that I want you all to remember that it was N uh, Canara Bank that has partnered with National E-Governance Service Limited that is your NESL and they together launched an electronic bank guarantee that was launched on 117th foundation day of Canara Bank that was launched 19th of November 2020. All right. And this new electronic bank guarantee platform will offer several advantages that will include greater transparency, better monitoring, secure transmission of BG to beneficiary, which shall lead to a higher degree of compliance. Also, this paves ways to argument or uh, to augment the integration of environmental, social and governance framework into the business. That means they will be focusing towards sustainable development goals here. All right, highly important. Also remember as on 31st of March 2022, it was your Canara Bank that is ranked as number one bank under the digital payment performance by the Ministry of Electronics and Information and Technology. Highly important friends. I repeat, as on March 31st, 2022, Canara Bank was ranked number one under the digital payments performance by Ministry of Electronics and Information and Technology. All right. So coming back, it was your Canara Bank that launched electronic bank guarantee platform along with in partnership with NESL. It was launched on 117th Foundation Day of Canara Bank that was on 19th of November. So that's the information you need to focus on and write it in your notes. Next, Federal Bank. Federal Bank has tied up with JCP India to finance heavy equipment buyers. I repeat, it was your Federal Bank that is a private sector lender that has recently signed a memorandum of understanding with JCB India that is a leading manufacturer of a uh, manufacturer of earth moving and construction equipment and this is to finance prospective buyers of heavy construction equipment and expand their loan portfolio according to this agreement federal bank will be the preferred financial partner of jcb india and customers of jcb india can obtain loans from the lender at competitive interest rate that means now they will be able to also get loan at a competitive interest or at a better interest rates than that of the market all right highly important so we can say that which bank recently has tied up with jcb india for funding them or to provide finance to them for their heavy equipment buyers it will be your federal bank next fdi foreign direct investment equity inflows dip that means it reduced by 14 percent during the april to september to 26.9 billion dollar we know all the things that is going on all around the world all right because of the geo geopolitics because of the inflation that is we are seeing all around the world because of the war like scenario that we are facing all right in ukraine and russia because of that we can say many countries are saying that we can face recession ahead also we can see because of the ftx that is your cryptocurrency exchange that was the second largest cryptocurrency exchange because of the collapse of that we can see multiple users have their money stuck into their ftx accounts so all these things because of all these reasons we can say that there is a high chance that we can face recession in the upcoming years so due to which the foreign direct investment that used to come from different countries to india has dipped to 26.9 percent or 26.9 billion dollar and it is in dip by 14 percent during the period of april to september month all right important data definitely you should remember all right the country that from which we used to see the maximum foreign direct investment was singapore and we can say that singapore is the top investor in india with 10 billion us dollar foreign direct investment in the first half of fiscal year 23 all right 
then this was followed by mauritius all right it was followed by uae then usa netherlands and japan in india if we talk about the sector that attracted the maximum fdi it was your computer software and hardware sector that attracted the highest inflow of around 6.3 billion dollars of fdi in the first quarter of 2023 then after this computer software and hardware sector it was your services then trading chemicals automobile sector construction and activities and so on all right so basically we can see here that the fdi in india is getting low it is not just in india you you need to understand as i mentioned all these factors it is because of the multiple things multiple geopolitical politics that is going all around the world next so here you can see as per the data from dpiit the foreign direct investment equity inflows into india has declined by 14% to 26.9 billion dollar during september uh, april to september month that was from uh, 31.15 billion dollar during the first half of the quarter of 2022 next next is india's gdp growth may average around 6.3% during 2021 to 2020 2030 period that means if we talk about a long term that is for this decade that is will be from 2021 to 2030 if we talk about india's gdp growth rate and uh, the average at which it will be growing will be around 6.3% according to data that was released by outlook for india's economic growth and policy platform a report by the name snp global market intelligence stated that india's gdp growth rate is projected to be about an average of 6.3% annually from 2021 to 2030 all right as a result we can say india will surpass japan and germany to become the world's third largest economy in, uh, in nominal terms of or in the terms of us dollars all right that means india will surpass japan and germany and it will become the world's third largest economy and even this is stated by multiple mps and multiple ministers of india that are saying that by the year 2027 we will become the third largest economy in the world and similar data that stated that india's gdp growth rate between the time period 2021 to 2030 will be around 6.3% all right then if we talk about snp global this was formerly known as macro hill financial who is the uh, ceo here and uh, president and chief executive officer douglas l peterson and when was this established it was in 2016 that this was established where is the headquarter it is in new york usa in new york only we know there is the headquarter of united nation and united nation development program also similarly if we talk about unep where is the headquarter nairobi kenya then if we talk about the headquarter of unesco where is it it is in paris and we know in paris olympic games for the year 2024 will be held here all right next next is next we will be talking about ravi kumar sagar he is the youngest entrepreneur and during covid 19 during the period of covid 19 only he earned more than 2 to 3 crore rupees just by selling the pp kits all right pp kits that were used by the doctors at the time of the pandemic he used to sell those uh, kits he used to arrange for the kits and he used to sell them and that's the how that's how he became one of the youngest entrepreneurs and now he has been awarded with dr kalam seva puraskar highly prestigious award this dr kalam seva puraskar it is hosted every year by vande bharat foundation and lead india foundation and this is basically awarded to commemorate the birth anniversary of our former late president dr apj abdul kalam this award is given to all those candidates in the honor of all the people who have contributed greatly to the society and similarly as i just mentioned ravi kumar sagar he is a entrepreneur and during the time of covid 19 he worked hard and he used to sell ppe kits that is your personal protective equipments and with the help of that he made a business with a turnover of more than 2 crore rupees all right he has also authored after that he also authored a book that was youth business and he is the youngest entrepreneur who has been awarded with this dr kalam seva puraskar mark this highly important here you can see it is your dr kalam seva puraskar hosted every year by vande bharat anniversary and lead india foundation that together 
observe this award it is observed on 15th of october every year that is the birth anniversary of our late former president of india dr apj abdul kalam next next is director general of indo french chamber of commerce payal kanwar has been conferred with the french national order highly important all right this french national order it was given to payal as kanwar who is the director of ifcci that is your indo french chamber of commerce and this award was presented to her by ambassador of france to india emmanuel lenin at a special ceremony that was held in france as you can see her in the picture she is payal kanwar and she is the director general of ifcci all right she was honored with this award in the recognition of her outstanding commitment and contribution towards developing and promoting economic and bilateral relationship between india and france and also expanding the french business ecosystem in india all right so in simple ways if we say she helped to develop india and france relationship also she helped to encourage the and expand the trade relation between these two countries that is the reason she was honored with this french national order award all right by enamol lenin who is the ambassador of france to india if we talk about payal s kanwar uh, she joined ifcci in 2011 also she became the director general of it in 2016 under which she led a pan india team of 30 staff members all right highly important next next is vinith kumar irse takes over as the ceo of kvic at mumbai what is kvic kvic is your khadi and village industries commission what is your irsee indian railway service of electrical engineers all right so vinith kumar vinith kumar who is an officer of 1993 batch of irsee he took over as the charge of the ceo of kvic under the ministry of ms that is your msme that is your micro small and medium enterprise at kvic central office in mumbai maharashtra so who has taken over as the charge of kvic at mumbai maharashtra he will be vinith kumar all right highly important he has previously served as the chairman of shama prasad mukherji port also that is in kolkata west bengal all right if we talk about kvic that is khadi and village industries commission this is a statutory body all right and this took uh, over the work of all the all india khadi and village industries board in 1957 all right and similarly if we talk about the first center of excellence for khadi first center of excellence for khadi that was set up in new delhi remember this information also question can be asked next next we are talking about agni 3 india carries out successful training launch of intermediate range ballistic missile agni 3 from the apj abdul kalam island highly important friends mark this so question can be asked this agni 3 this agni 3 is an intermediate ballistic missile intermediate range blasting missile of which country it is of india all right from where did we saw a successful launch of this missile it was from apj abdul kalam island that is of the coast of odisha all right this was a test that was a routine test of this particular missile all right also agni 3 this has a range of around 3000 to 5000 km as the name suggests intermediate range blasting missile so the range of this is around 3000 to 5000 km and it can carry a payload of up to 1.5 ton all right then if we talk about drdo can you tell me where is the headquarter of drdo it is in new delhi and one was this established it was in 1958 when isro was established all right and india has recently carried out this successful launch of this missile next next is launch of 7th 250 men ferry craft by the name manjula has launched i repeat indian administrator officer is officer binod kumar who is a principal secretary of transport in the west bengal has launched the 7th 250 men ferry craft by the name manjula it was launched in presence of indrajit das gupta who is of the warship production superintendent in kolkata 
All right, if we talk about this Manjula ferry craft, this was built under Make in India initiative of Ministry of Defence with all major and auxiliary equipment or sub uh, systems sourced from indigenous manufacture. That means this particular Manjula ferry craft, it is made in India. All right. Also remember, six out of these seven ferry craft has already been delivered at Port Blair in Vishakhapatnam and Mumbai, and this will be the seventh edition of this 250 man ferry craft. Manjula. Moving on, next DPIIT. All right, if we talk about this DPIIT, they have launched a startup applications for registrations on Mark Portal. What is this Mark Portal? Mark Portal is basically here you can see mentorship, advisory, assistance, resilience, and growth. This is a one stop portal that will allow all the mentorship, all the guidance that a startup requires, and to help them to grow in the various stages of the startup. All right, it will be providing sector focused guidance, hand holding, support to startups throughout their cycle. It will establish a formalized and structured platform to facilitate intelligent matchmaking between the mentors and the mentees so this is your mark portal and for this only remember dpiit has launched a startup applications for the registration on these mark portals and remember dpiit is your department for promotion of industry and internal trade that comes under the ministry of commerce and industry they launched this startup application for registrations on mark portal the national mentorship platform by startup india to help guide new startups grow and flourish and to provide them mentorship to provide them help the aim of this is to strengthen the startup ecosystem in India, which is currently ranked as the third largest globally. All right, this is your mentor. Also, this mark portal will be in three phases. The first phase will be mentor onboarding. Here, 400 plus expert mentors across the sector will be provided. Then the second phase will be here, the startup onboarding. That means startups will be coming here and they will be onboarding on this particular portal. And the third phase here will be mark portal launch and mentor matchmaking. That means which mentor is required for which startup, how a particular mentor can help the startup in growing at different level or different different stages of it all right so that is your mark portal that will be conducted in three phases and for that only startup applications for registration on mark portals has been launched by dpit and all these things are done to encourage the startup ecosystem in india next world chronic obstructive pulmonary disease day when do we observe this it is observed on 16th of november all right World Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease Day. This is annually observed across the globe on 3rd Wednesday. All right. And this time in 2022, it was on 16th of November that this was observed. All right. In 2022, it was 17th of November. And in 2023, it will be 15th of November. Then you need to remember the theme here. The theme of this World Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease Day is your lungs for life this is the theme that you need to remember next is odisha's chief minister navin patnayak they have launched amlan amlan scheme to accelerate the reduction of anemia highly important what is amlan it stands for anemia mukt lankhya abhiyan i repeat what is amlan amlan is your anemia mukt lankhya abhiyan this scheme was launched virtually by chief minister of odisha Naveen Patnaik. Either the question can be asked, this Amlan scheme is of which state? It is of Odisha. Or question can be asked, there was a anemia scheme. All right, Redux for uh, reduction of anemia a scheme was launched by Odisha. Can you name the scheme? It is Amlan scheme. All right, highly important. This will be implemented with joint efforts of many departments, including health and family welfare, schools and mass education, women and child development, mission shakti and scheduled classes and scheduled drives, development of department. CM has also released the operational guidelines for Amlan here. All right, and it was Odisha's Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik who launched this Amlan scheme. Who is the governor of Odisha? Ganeshi Lalji. Chilka Lake Bird Sanctuary is also located here. Mark this. All right. So friends, these were all your current affairs. Now let's go for a quick revision. DST and CESC has partnered to improve EV batteries production specifically targeting the Indian consumer. FPC to set up India's first private agriculture mandi at Nasik. 
ट्वेल्थ ग्लोबल एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी यूनिवर्सिटी रैंकिंग एंड सर्वे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री वॉज रिलीज एंड आई आई टी डेली हैज टॉप इन द यूनिवर्सिटी रैंकिंग एंड एम आई टी रिगार रैंक द ग्लोबली इन फर्स्ट वीपो ग्लोबल इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी फाइलिंग्स रीच अ रिकॉर्ड लेवल इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन एंड मैक्सिमम ऑफ दैम वर फ्रॉम एशियन रीजन एक्सरसाइज गरुड़ा शक्ति द एट्थ एडिशन ऑफ दिस एक्सरसाइज वॉज कंडक्टेड बिटवीन इंडिया एंड इंडोनेशियन ट्रूप्स एंड दिस वॉज हेल्ड इन इंडोनेशिया द फर्स्ट एडिशन वॉज हेल्ड इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व इन इंडिया गरुड़ा शक्ति डब्ल्यू एच ओ हैज रिपोर्टेड दैट नियरली फोर्टी मिलियन चिल्ड्रन आर ससेप्टेबल टू मीजल्स थ्रेट नेक्स्ट आयुष मिनिस्टर हैज इनोग्रेटेड नॉर्थ ईस्ट फर्स्ट आर आर आई यू एम इन सिलचर असम RBI overnight SDF balances held by bank eligible for LCR computation. IDFC First Bank has launched First Tap that is India's first sticker based debit card. Canara Bank has partnered with NESL to launch electronic bank guarantee. GSTN has included in FIP list under account aggregator framework. Federal Bank has tied up with JCB India to finance heavy equipment buyers and loans at the government proper rate will be provided here. Then FDI equity inflows has declined by 14% during the first half of fiscal year 23 to 26.9 billion dollar as per the report released by DPIIT. Then in IADFC First Bank has launched a first step this is a debit card that is India's first sticker based debit card. Canara Bank has partnered with NESL to launch electronic bank guarantee. Then this is a platform. Then GSTN included FIP list under the account aggregator framework. Federal Bank has tied up with JCB India to finance heavy equipment buyers. FDI equity inflows declined by 14% during the first half of 23 to 26.9 billion dollar we have done this then SNP global market intelligence report it released that GDP growth rate may become an average of 6.3% between the period that is from 2021 to 2030 ministry of house family and welfare discontinues air suvidha form for international arrivals young entrepreneur ravi kumar sagar has been conferred with dr abdul kalam seva puraskar dg of the indo french chamber of commerce payal kanwar has been awarded the french national order vinit kumar takes over the ceo of skvic at mumbai maharashtra icic bank axis bank and sbi have in launched an insurance uh, sbi life insurance has acquired 10% stake each in JV of IOCL CCPL. India carries out successful training launch of IRBM Agni 3 from Odisha. Manjula, this is the 7th 250 men ferry craft launch at Kolkata, West Bengal. DPIIT has launched startup application for registrations on Mark portal. World Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease Day on 16th of November. Odisha's Chief Minister launched Amlan mission to eradicate anemia. so these were your some important current affairs friends now it's time for your homework first question is which country has recently passed its free trade agreement with india second arita patti has been notified as the first biodiversity heritage site of which state third article 3 to 4 of the constitution which was seen in the news is related to the appointment of which position Fourth question as per the recent OECD report what is the GDP forecast for India for fiscal year 23 Fifth which institution issued a working paper on decline of India's ranking on global indices So these are your five homework question friends if you find the session to be interesting all you have to do is comment below and let us know what are your views on such sessions do like the video we will know that you are liking this video you are liking such content and you want us to continue in this future also so that's all for the day thank you and have a nice day that's all for the day friends i hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the youtube channel as well as apart from youtube channel you can go and follow us at affairs cloud telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 76773362 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairscloud_official in the end friends 
if you use a code that is vikas10 you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code vikas10 also if you have any problem regarding the course purchase any problem regarding to our application you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862 and if you want to mail us you can also mail us on support@theratofaffairscloud.com and i assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue